dear students in this class uh, we will see some uh, uh, scheduling algorithms see these uh, scheduling algorithms uh, <coughs> are also called as the cpu scheduling uh, algorithms okay see this uh, cpu scheduling is uh, nothing but uh, deciding to which process among n number of processes in ready queue the cpu will be allocated okay this is the question here see cpu scheduling is nothing but it is a taking a decision decision about what among n number of processes to which particular process cpu will be allocated it means that among n number of processes which particular process will be selected to get the chance to use the cpu okay there are many cpu scheduling algorithms are there and that uh, first one is first come first uh, first served uh, scheduling algorithm that is fc fs second is a shortest job first scheduling third is priority scheduling fourth is round robin scheduling fourth fifth is multi level queue scheduling sixth is multi level feedback queue scheduling among these six algorithms most commonly used algorithms are first come first served shortest job first scheduling and uh, round robin scheduling etc okay so let us see these algorithms one by one the first come first served uh, algorithm <coughs> here this is the first come first served scheduling algorithm that is fc fs so it is a very simplest uh, cpu scheduling algorithm the process which request that cpu first will be allocated the cpu first it means first come first serve basis that is uh, first uh, process uh, that which request the cpu that cpu will be um, get a chance to use the cpu so fcfs is simply uh, fcfs is simply uh, implemented by using uh, <coughs> one simple data structure that is q uh, particularly fifo queue that is first in first out queue so fcfs is implemented with a fifo queue that is a first in first out queue so that we can uh, correctly implement first come first serve scheduling so when a process enters the ready queue it's a pcb that is a process control block that a pcb will be attached or linked to the tail of that queue that is at the end of that queue and when the, the cpu becomes a free that the cpu is allocated to the process which is at the head of the queue it means at the at the uh, front of that queue okay the process which is at the head that process will get the cpu and whatever the C process just now um, has entered the queue it will be attached at the tail of the queue in between this head and queue uh, head and tail intermediate intermediate processes may be present the executing process or that running process then uh, it will be moved uh, sorry removed from the ready queue once that uh, process which was present in head of the queue uh, it once it gets the opportunity to use the cpu then it will be removed from the queue and its next cpu will be comes to that position that is ready queue the code for this is fcfs scheduling is very very simple to write and understand one disadvantage of this fcfs algorithm is average waiting time is longer here so average waiting time is long here okay uh, average waiting time is nothing but each process have to wait uh, to get the opportunity to use the cpu the total waiting time of all processes <coughs> uh, is nothing but waiting time and the total time taken by the processes to wait for the cpu and whole divided by total number of processes is, is nothing but average waiting time okay. In, uh, consider this one uh, simple uh, example uh, following some set of processes are there which will arrive at the uh, processor or uh, cpu at the time zero with the length of the cpu burst given in millisecond cpu burst is nothing but 
so how much amount of time that process is going to use that cpu that is a cpu burst already we have seen in last classes cpu burst and input output burst the time taken by the process to um, use that uh, cpu okay or else uh, how much amount of time that process has uh, kept the cpu with it and that is nothing but cpu burst so processes are nothing but p1 p2 p3 here that is set of processes these all processes are coming inside the uh, cpu at the time zero but the burst time cpu burst time for individual processes is like this 24 3 and 3 so if these processes comes uh, come inside this uh, cpu in this order p1 after that p2 after that p3 and they are served in a fcfs order we get the result as shown in this uh, following gantt chart the gantt chart is nothing but it is a bar chart which clearly shows the particular schedule including the start and finish times of each and every participating processes so here if you observe this gantt chart the p1 is arriving in the time zero and after arriving it takes 24 milliseconds to uh, execute after 24th millisecond p2 will enter inside the cpu then uh, it takes opportunity to uh, to be executed and uh, it takes the cpu and it starts uh, using that cpu and it um, executes or it uses that cpu for 3 milliseconds it means up to 27th millisecond after 27th millisecond next process starts to use cpu that is uh, uh, again it uh, p3 uses uh, 3 milliseconds so p3 uh, stops its execution at the 30th millisecond this is a gantt chart for this sequence or order of processes p1 p2 p3 when burst time is 24 3 and 3 so the waiting time is 0 millisecond for uh, process p1 clearly you can see here the waiting time sorry Uh, waiting time uh, for p1 process is 0 milliseconds because it is not uh, waiting uh, any uh, time because uh, immediately it got opportunity to use the cpu the but waiting time for process p2 is 24 milliseconds because up to first 24 milliseconds p1 was using the cpu after 24th millisecond p2 gets opportunity to use the cpu so p2 has to wait 24 milliseconds similarly 27 millisecond is a waiting time for process p3 so therefore average waiting time is 0 plus 24 plus 27 whole divided by number of processes that is 3 is equal to 17 milliseconds suppose if these processes comes come or arrive in the order p2 p3 p1 then the result will be like this so first p2 will get uh, opportunity to use cpu and uh, it is also arriving at a uh, time zero and it uses that cpu till third millisecond after third millisecond p3 comes and it also uses uh, the cpu till uh, 3 milliseconds that is nothing but up to 6th millisecond and after that p1 comes and starts using a cpu and it uses 24 milliseconds so it ends its execution in the 30th millisecond now the average time for uh, waiting time for this uh, uh, sequence or order is 6 plus 0 plus 3 whole divided by 3 is equal to 3 millisecond so fcfs scheduling algorithm is non preemptive algorithm so wh why it is called as non preemptive once the cpu is allocated to a process that process keeps that cpu until it releases the cpu either by terminating or by requesting the input output if you observe both uh, sequences here in first sequence in first gantt chart p1 started to execute and uh, still uh, till it does not complete its uh, execution it is not giving the cpu to other process so because of this only it is not it is called as non preemptive algorithm in a second gantt chart also you can observe first p2 is uh, uh, getting a, a chance to use a cpu till its uh, uh, completion of its execution it is not giving chance uh, to use the cpu for uh, other processes similarly p3 starts to use cpu only when p2 p2 completely uh, completely executed 
once p3 starts to use a cpu it does not give the cpu to other processors so these processors keep the cpu until they um, uh, uh, terminate or else uh, they start to wait or request for input output devices so it is not good to allow uh, a process to keep the cpu for longer period okay <clears throat> in next class we will see shortest job first scheduling algorithm